I'm Michael Fisher, craft beer enthusiast and industry professional. I'm on a journey to find some people whose professions or hobbies revolve around the fermentation of malt and hops. We're going to dive into their passions and share some conversations over their favorite brews. So join me as I bring the brew to you. Welcome back to another round of Brew to You. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, and I'm joined today by our guest from Three Barn Doors, Aaron Cunningham. Welcome aboard, Aaron. It's, uh, it's gonna be a, a fun day today. So before we get started in the beer, I'm sure people are curious as to what is Three Barn Doors? It's a company I started two years ago. Uh, we do custom furniture design. We just build cool stuff, unique things, and we have fun while we do it. Fantastic, and you're actually doing uh, one of the reasons we picked you, other than you're just a, a, a beer guy, is you're actually doing a lot of like bar tops and table tops and uh, things that are making the, a lot of these craft beer establishments, whether it's bars or breweries. Yeah, what we do is uh, we help restaurants and bars, mostly local stuff. We help them uh, just put a little personality in their space. When you got a bar, it's nice to have a good vibe and kind of just a cool look, and it kind of keeps people coming back other than the beer itself, but um, that's what we kind of specialize in. You're based in Cleveland. Tell me a little bit about your background. You know, what got you into woodworking? Where are you from? What do you do? Well, I was born in Alaska, lived there five years. I grew up in Seattle, and then I ended up going to a community college to play baseball. Uh, I ended up playing ball for 10 years. And then after my baseball career, I ended up falling into this whole role of woodworking all kind of on a limb. That's as, stupid, as right? American dream as it gets. <laughs> like, it wasn't even a hobby. That's fantastic. So you played baseball. Um, and if I recall properly, uh, you, you played for the Cleveland Indians. Yes. And that's a big deal in this town. Unfortunately, you didn't play for the Browns. However, you probably could have been the quarterback for the Browns and the record would have been the same. Hey, you know, I can't, I'm, no comment, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the whole thing with the Indians that come here, I mean, Cleveland's been the main reason why we've been able to thrive. Um, they support local big time. They support like custom made and I um, mean, we're able to do our thing because of Cleveland. Fantastic. And speaking of Cleveland, um, uh, the first beer that we have coming here is from a Cleveland staple brewery. Um, a little bit that I know about Great Lakes um, that maybe you don't. They're part of what they call the class of 88. So, which means they opened in 1988, which was uh, the shoots, Sierra Nevada. They did a collaboration series and it was called the class of 88. Uh, and particularly the beer we have is Dortmunder Gold, which is one of their flagships. So, you know, t you know tell me about uh, what you know about this beer and, and, and why you chose it for today. Now, to be honest, I don't have much um, knowledge of beer at all other than taste, and if it tastes good, I like it. I mean, I drink this beer a lot, not daily, not while I'm working on tools and whatnot, but um, it just has a good taste to me. But I think it's, it's, it's perfect. It's like, you know, you're a kind of a simple beer guy. You just like, if it tastes good, I'm gonna drink it, but you also, you weren't a woodworker, and now you're a woodworker. Yeah. So, I, I wasn't a beer guy, so yeah. I'm gonna start a brewery tomorrow. Right, we're, that's absolutely right. I might. <laughs> Coming to you soon. Well, let's open this puppy up. Feel free to. We'll do it the manly way. It's, it's go. gonna take like six tries. Let's see how it's quite. Oh, dude, oh. I'm so cool today. <laughs> so, is there a specific way to pour beer? Is this is this classy? So, in this today, we're gonna expand your horizons. We can be your live in-person YouTube video on how you pour beer and experience the beer to its fullest. So, what you find, uh, there's this thing in your nose called your olfactory. It's way up in your nose, and actually, almost all the flavor of the beer almost all the flavor of anything comes out of that. So your brain makes you feel like all the flavor comes off your tongue, but actually about 70% of flavor comes out of aroma. Okay. So this is a very uh, bright beer, and bright is a beer nerd term. You can be like, oh, this is, you can use this sometime. A well-finished beer is like this. It's very clear, you can see right through it. So let's drink this beer. Yep. So you're from Seattle. Uh, you played baseball all over country. Uh, definitely a stop was in Cleveland. Is that when you discovered Dortmunder? What brings? What was your reason for bringing this beer? I didn't start really drinking oh, that many things or having a beer with dinner too often until I really came over to the Cleveland area. And then I realized I'm just a big supporter of local. And then I started diving into Great Lakes just like everybody else out here does. And then Dortmunder, Dortmunder was definitely one of my favorite that they put out. It's a nice hoppy lager, but good solid 
Uh, I mean, it's it's Cleveland's. Maybe somebody would get mad because I said this. It's Cleveland's Sam Adams. <laughs> So, in the uh, spirit of the show, obviously we're going to have uh, a couple beers today. So, let's move on from Dortmunder, which is a fantastic choice. What was the next beer you brought? The Kona Brewing Company beer here. It's Hanale. And the reason I chose this one is because my wife, her family, they, they love Hawaii, they love Kauai, all those islands over there. They grew up going over there. Well, let's give it a gander here before you attack it with your ring. So, this is their Island IPA. It's ale brewed with passion fruit, orange, guava and other natural flavors. So this is kind of a rage thing right now. In addition to the haze craze, uh, like citrus IPAs, kind of fruit added IPAs. Go ahead and open that up. Let's, uh, let's without further ado, let's taste it. Ah, there we go. See, you're tougher than me. I can't, So I'm, I'm delicate. So, oh, you can really smell the guava. It you smells can, like Hawaii. <laughs> so fruity smells in beer are esters. It smells a lot fruitier than it actually tastes. It's good, you know, it's got a, a sweet nose to it. However, the flavor complements the hop and it's not a particularly sweet beer. It could still put some hair in your chest. I mean, they'd be blonde hairs. <laughs> well, now we're going to make a journey uh, from the islands of Hawaii, clear across the world to uh, Dublin, Ireland. The reason that Guinness is, plays a part in our family, my wife's family is super Irish with a Kilbane name. And so we chug them down, but also it's actually a nice beer to um, casually drink. And I've always likened Guinness draft, particular, but Guinness, the same essential beer. Um, it's kind of like the tofu of beers, uh, where it really takes on the flavor. You can mix it with cider, you can mix it with wheat beer, you can mix it with light beer, like the, the black and blue, uh, a Guinness and a Labatt Blue. Well, you can mix those two beers? Absolutely. Shut up. It, so basically what, if you mix it with like Labatt Blue, for example, then it just like thins out the Guinness in general. So. If, if Guinness is something that you want to like, but maybe haven't got a taste for yet. <laughs> These are experiences I've never tasted. So this is a little different one. So this is nitroed. So it's gonna be, it's not gonna give you the same thing we're gonna get a creamy head. I would still recommend pouring it on the harder, harder side. So more straight up and down and just kind of pour it in there and see what happens. Hey, yo. Okay, that's, that was kind of bad. Might have to sip it. This is yours though. Oh, okay. Well, then there you go. Well, now, that, can, now that can be yours. Now we're friends. Okay, you can take. Yeah. Or I can do that one if you, if you want. If it needs to be like a pack, like a Blood Brothers. Thing. Yeah, yeah. What if I have cooties though? It's all right. I've had. That's fine. Be the most action I've had in weeks. <laughs> so yeah. So you're. You'll find it's a creamy texture, and that's the nitrogen carbonation versus or the nitro versus uh, regular CO2. But yeah, it's just smooth. It's good. You get um, a little bit of coffee. A little bit of a burnt character to it, and that's like to do the roast level of the malt. So uh, a fun journey that we've been on for sure, um, and it looks like uh, we're coming back to the United States. We have a beer from a, a brewery out of Baltimore. Uh, tell us about what this one is. The name of it is Sweet Baby Jesus, and it's actually a beer. I don't. It's not like I drink this one all the time, but um, you know, a lot of times when you get too much food in you, and you want to have a beer, but you don't want to sit there and chug a bunch. To me, it's a dessert beer. It's got a lot of flavor. It's got that coffee flavor, that kind of chocolatey flavor. Chocolate peanut butter porter, I believe. Sometimes you can just get the chocolate from the malt. Um, oh, I can just smell it, dude. It's nath. It would make a great float. Put a scoop of vanilla ice cream in here. At the end of a meal, man, this is a solid drink. So moving on uh, from Sweet Baby Jesus, you come into three barn doors. I want to get uh, a table made. Uh, you know, I own a bar, I own a house. I want, I want to get a piece of furniture made by you. You come in, you got a great shop here. W what's in your fridge? What's your fridge beer that, you know, maybe you have while you wait here at three barn doors? When people first walk into the, to our whole setup here, we offer Miller Lite. And appropriately, Miller Lite in the uh, 16 ounce pounder can. I like your style, I, I got to say. I mean, bringing beer into it, I mean, it, you put beer, furniture, it doesn't sound like it should be in the same realm. But to me, I think uh, we really try to, to design around a, a good time. At the end of the day, truly, uh, what you're doing in, in a, a serious form is art. A brewmaster's that's true. art yeah, yeah. is their, or their craft, and that's why it's called craft beer. So there's 100% a correlation between craft beer and, uh, you know, craft product. In, in tradition, in, in brew to you, we say the cheers for the end. So, so here's to your fridge beer. 
We appreciate it, man. This has been fantastic. Well, let's try this and see what we think. It's a brew to you. It's poetic. Poetic justice. Well, this is always good. You've got to give it to the Bud Miller Coors people of the world for their um, level of consistency and quality product that they can offer out of multiple facilities all across the country producing the same exact product every time. Well, hey, I think it's about time to wrap up this episode of Brew to You. Uh, really want to thank uh, Aaron Cunningham and Three Barn Doors for letting us come in, have a few beers, have a few laughs, uh, and you know, showing us a good time. You got a great facility offering uh, some really amazing, unique crafted furniture, uh, and actually some unique gifts and different things like that. So definitely uh, give them the opportunity to come up and uh, check things out. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, dude. Hey, man, it's my pleasure. Okay, we're going to catch you next time on the next round of Brew to You.